Hello everyone and happy Easter! Today is a day all about eggs, so I thought I would show you some of my egg specimens that I have been collecting for a while. Because of course a good biologist in training spends a lot of time collecting different egg specimens. And actually some of the eggs are from uh, my own personal animals, which have laid a few eggs for me. These are actually the golden finch eggs, which uh, persimmon has laid. These are the infertile ones, the ones that didn't have anybody inside of them, no developing embryo. And then these ones over here are actually some poorly calcified crested gecko eggs. These eggs uh, I will talk about a little bit more later, but they are not how a crested gecko egg normally should look, and I'll explain why that is in just a minute. We also have a chicken egg, and we have some eggs from a sparrow that laid her eggs inside of our shed and got scared away and never came back for them, unfortunately. So these eggs didn't make it, but I brought them in to use them as specimens anyway. But yes, so eggs! I was just so excited because I have so many varieties that I can share with you, and I have a little bit of knowledge that I can share with you about them too. For example, all female vertebrates, which means all animals with an internal skeletal system produce eggs, but most mammals keep their eggs inside of them and give live birth. Not unlike you, Mr. Gecko. You do not give live birth, but you, Mr. Cat, well, Miss Cat, yes, you would give live birth. <laughs> So all birds and many reptiles, not all reptiles, but many reptiles, lay their eggs instead of keeping them in their bodies. Uh, and by laying their egg, they give their developing embryo a self-contained little life support system. Because that yolk in there is very good for them. It allows the uh, little embryo to develop all on its own instead of needing to be inside of the mother's body, which takes... Um, less resources on the mother. There's pros and cons because then it also means that the egg is a little bit vulnerable. For example, if something came along and scared the bird out of the nest and never came back, then the egg is getting abandoned and so on. But there are thousands and thousands of different eggs from thousands of different species and each one differs slightly from the other. Even eggs from the same family are different, like this chicken egg. It's a bird and so is these finch eggs, but look at the size difference between them. There's a huge size difference, and even these smaller birds, this little, I'm assuming a sparrow, I could be totally wrong, I need to do some research on what this egg exactly belongs to, but this egg, and the finch eggs, even they're different. They're different in color, they're different in size, they're different in shape. All of the eggs differ depending on the different species of animal that they're laid from. Uh, but all of the eggs do have some similarities. For example, these reptile eggs right here and these bird eggs all have hard external shells which protect the developing embryo inside. And they all have yolk. The egg yolk that is in them is what takes care of the embryo and allows them to become developed so that they hatch and they can scurry off and be a new little hatched creature. And it's a very interesting fact actually, the more yolk that is inside of an egg, the more that it supports the developing embryo. So, for example, you guys are familiar with chicken eggs. I'm pretty sure world round most people eat chicken eggs. Uh, so a chicken egg, this one is actually from my fridge. <laughs> so this has a lot of yolk in it. And if you think about it, what do baby chicks look like when they hatch? They're actually already fluffy. They've got their feathers on them. They can walk. They can open their eyes. So they can move around. So a chicken is a pretty developed little baby when it hatches. And that is because there's a lot of yolk in a chicken egg. That's one of the reasons that we cultivate chickens as a domestic animal and eat as much chicken eggs as we do, because they have a lot of yolk per egg. And so that yolk goes on to feed the developing embryo. It hatches into a pretty advanced little baby bird. Then we have our finch eggs. You guys have seen in previous vlogs our little itty bitty naked baby finches. When they hatch, they have no feathers on them, their eyes are closed, and they're completely helpless and dependent on their parents to be able to help them eat for several months after, well, for about a month, you know, after they hatch. So that's totally different from a chicken. And then we have the reptile egg. Now the reptile eggs are pretty interesting. You'll, you can notice some differences in shape and size, let me back up a little bit, come on camera, you can do it, in shape and size quite a bit right away. So some of them are really narrow, and come on, you can do it, yeah, so the reptile egg is pretty long and narrow, and the bird egg actually comes to a point on the end, that actually is an elliptical egg, so what this does is it lets the finch eggs be laid in a group so that it's easier, because you can see what happens if I put all of them into this little seashell even, they kind of rotate so that the pointy ends go in 
and they're able to cluster together like this. This makes the eggs stay close together in a group so that it's easier for the itty bitty little bird, in this case persimmon or finch, to sit on top of them and keep them safe. And the little pointy end also means that the egg tends to roll in a circle. There, now, there are some bird eggs, such as owl eggs, which are spherical, which is a total, a total sphere that's totally round, kind of like this, you know, totally round. So, like, owl eggs are like that, but they tend to be in a nest where they're, they don't have to worry about that. The finch eggs come to this little point to help them stay close together in a little group so it's easier to incubate all of them as the parent. And if they start to roll away, they're not really going to get that far. They just kind of go in a circle. They're not like a ball, where if you push it, it's going to go very very far at all. So there's lots and lots of differences. It's pretty fun. The reptile eggs, now these are poorly calcified crested gecko eggs. Most of my crested geckos are rescue crested geckos, which means I've got them from living situations that weren't ideal. A proper crested gecko egg shouldn't have this spotty patterning. It should actually look a lot like this egg in terms of color and smoothness. It shouldn't be rough. It shouldn't be yellow with these spots. But this is just kind of what my girls are laying me until they manage to get enough calcium in their system. And crested geckos, believe it or not, kind of like chickens, will actually lay eggs even if there's, they're not fertilized. Even if they're just kind of dud eggs. So these are dud eggs. There's no, no little baby inside of them. There never was. They were just empty to begin with, just like these guys and that chicken egg. Those guys probably had somebody in them, but unfortunately they got cold and so they didn't get to hatch, but that happens. But yeah, so look at this. Reptile eggs. Bird eggs. Some pretty key differences. Uh, you know, the in shape and actually reptile eggs, these guys are going to have a lot of yolk because they're going to hatch and boom, they're ready to go. They don't need any help from a parent. They don't need to be taken care of. Unlike the little finch eggs. And so the crested geckos will hatch, they're about the size of, eh, you know, the body is probably the size of my fingernail with the tail uh, attached elsewhere. So they're pretty, they're pretty developed when they come out. They look like miniature versions of adults. And I really love looking at the differences between the eggs because these guys are long and narrow. Crested geckos lay eggs in twos usually. They'll lay, lay them in ones occasionally, but they're usually laid in twos. Whereas our finches can lay anywhere from one to nine to twelve eggs, depending. Chickens can lay a whole bunch of eggs. We've bred them to be really, really good prolific egg layers. Oh, but I just love it. All the little differences, tons and tons of different eggs, even though they span from bird to reptile. Platypus, which is a mammal, also lays eggs. I don't have any platypus eggs. That would be kind of amazing. But this is just a little egg collection. Uh, oh yeah, and one last thing. You see how this egg is brown? So think about that. Chicken eggs, we've domesticated the chicken so long, we want to be able to easily find their egg. It's kind of nifty for us that the chicken egg is white. Now, the sparrow, the outside little sparrow, whoever laid this egg, doesn't want anyone to find these eggs because they are a wild bird living out in the wild. Well, it's a very nifty thing that they have a little brown egg with this patterning right here. It looks kind of like dirt. You wouldn't really think twice if you saw this. If you're walking along and you're more familiar with seeing those kinds of eggs, you wouldn't really recognize that as an egg first off. So that's pretty nifty. That's just a way of camouflaging and protecting their, their little nest and trying to keep their babies safe. And it's just fun. This is my current egg collection, so it'll be pretty fun to see what happens next year. We'll have to see if I can get any more egg specimens. I love collecting these things. But yeah, so happy Easter, everybody. There's a little bit more about eggs for you, and I hope you guys are having a great day. Bye-bye.